Hello, welcome back to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry, and I'm here to give you another panel idea. This is Stash Timber 2023, and we're trying to whittle down our pesky panels for the month. So I have this wonderful Great Smoky Mountains panel. I love the Great Smoky Mountains, so I bought this when I was in Paducah. And I also bought, uh, I, actually I did not buy the um, accompanying fabrics until later, but they are from the, the National Park line that uh, Raleigh Blake has. So if you have any of these panels, there's a whole bunch of different yardages that you can get to put with your panels. So today I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with this. All right, so out of our, what I'll call my light fabric will be background fabric. And then my three colors, which is this dark brown. And then I have my other two colors. We're gonna cut four pieces from each of those colors. And then we're gonna have four uh, companion pieces to this. So actually there will be 12 pieces. These are nine and a half inch squares. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make giant half square triangles or HSTs. We're gonna put right sides together with these two. I have a line drawn from one corner to the opposite corner. And we're gonna sew one quarter inch away on both sides from the drawn line. And you can use your quarter inch foot to guide you with this line. And uh, you can chain piece those through just like you do uh, regular smaller HSTs. Just try not to pull too much on your fabric if it's going over the edge and hitting the floor. Uh, you're working with the bias, so you don't want to stretch out your fabric. But uh, you can just sew up one side, turn the whole mess around, and sew down the other side of this line. And then cut with your scissors or your rotary cutter. I would use a rotary cutter in this case because it's such a long span. You'll cut these apart and have two half square triangles like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do these four in the brown and come back and show you what's next. Okay, so of each color you should have eight half square triangles of each color. So remember I have two other colors that I still have to cut and make into these half square triangles. So um, I ironed my seams open, I pressed them open rather because this is a bias cut here or a bias uh, seam so you don't want to stretch too much on that so just press those open you can press them towards the dark side or towards your print fabric if you would rather but there's really no benefit in doing that but there is benefit in doing it open so that this um, enhancement to our border will lay nice and flat so as many seams uh, just a, a general tip uh, as many seams as you can press open, the better for a nice flat quilt top. All right, so we have these little tails on here. Um, normally with smaller half square triangles, we would trim these down to a certain size, but these we're not trimming down. So these are, they started out as nine and a half, and now that we put our quarter inch seam, that took away a half an inch, so we have nine inch squares. So. <clears throat> We're gonna cut this in thirds, and we're going to cut three inches at a time. So position your four blocks this way and four blocks this way. There's a reason why I'm showing you this. You cannot lay all of them on here all facing the same way, um, unless you wanted to cut all eight at the same time, in which case you would do it like this. But uh, I think four total to cut at one time is almost pushing it as far as how many you should cut at a time. Uh, so you can certainly do them individually. Just remember to do four this way and four this way. So just think of a mountain. We're doing a Smoky Mountains panel project here. So 
put your print fabric in the shape of a mountain and then cut three slices. You'll make two cuts. So I can go ahead and cut my dog ears off here while I'm at it. You can do that at any point during this. <clears throat> so here I go with my get that lined up as best I can. There's a three inch cut and another three inch cut and I'm left with another three inch strip. So the same here. Cut these off. Get those out of the way. And just keep going with my three inch strips on this nine inch piece here. So there we go. This happens to be a three inch wide ruler so that was perfect for that. I do have a little bit of uh, overage on this one. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe I cut something about a quarter of an inch too too big or maybe it's just that one piece is big. Yeah that's what it is. Anyway it's not going to matter because we're going to mix all these up and sew them together in a different way. So what you're going to want to do is do that for your other two colors and when you come back <clears throat> with all three colors you can do every other. Uh, you're going to have, you're going to go this way. Just so you can kind of imagine it. They're actually going to be like this. This is what we're trying to end up with. But we're going to interchange those other two colors in with it. So we're going to end up with a, a piece that's sewn together, quarter inch seam allowances all through here but we're going to interchange our other two colors so let me go ahead and make my other uh, strips up and my half square triangles first out of those other two colors using my main background color here and we'll be able to mix all of these up and make some cool border pieces for our panel all right so all three colors of my half square triangles are made and pressed and stripped out into three inch strips and this is how we're going to position them um, so i'm just going to play around a little bit with mixing up the three colors and see what i come up with uh, as a color combination for this project um, you certainly could make four of each. I'm going to wind up with 12. I don't know if I'm going to use 12, but we're going to wind up with 12. Um, yeah, just let me goof around here a little bit and see what I can come up with. So there's an option, or or I could do this. I don't think it would look right to do something like this. I don't think. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's just no way really to get it to work out right that way. You could do that. That would be all right, I guess. So it's like every other and then your two outers. Or I could do two dark outer ones. Put this dark back and then this one and this one. So I could do two like that. Let's see, I have 12. So I could do, let's see, two like that. I kind of like that one. I'm liking this dark in the center. So you're just going to have to play around with what you have and depend on, you know, what your colors are like too. So, I mean, all of these coordinate any way you put them together. So 
anything beside another thing even even this light next to this orange well where is it or is it would it be this one no mm, is okay because there's enough of a contrast between these two really to do that but i kind of like this dark and then this dark over here and then a lighter so i don't know i'm just gonna make up some and see what they look like i guess figure out where to place them stay tuned okay i'm i don't know what i'm terrible at but for some reason <laughs> I have four sets that will look like this combination. Try not to get my pole in there. And then the rest of them, I have two sets of each. So there's two of that one, two of that one, two of that one, and two of this one, which is all the same color. So I'm not sure if I need... <laughs> I'm not real sure how I need to split these up. I know I've got even numbers to make it go around the panel equally, no matter what these combinations are. I can make it work. But I'm thinking I need to switch out something on this one from this one that has a combination of four or a, a repeat of four. So I'm going to play around a little bit more. That's just what you're going to have to do. Just kind of figure out a good combination uh, before you sew them together. And then once I sew them together, then we'll have to go through this process again, but in kind of a different light. We're going to be looking at it as, okay, how do I get the symmetrical on here? Or is it even possible? Hang tight. Okay, so I'm at my sewing machine, and I have the entire stack of the blocks, we'll call them blocks for now. And then as I want to sew, I pull down enough strips for one, according to how I had decided to arrange them over there on the cutting board. I did swap out some. Uh, to get rid of that one that was all this fabric so I have this one finished so that's all sewn together with quarter inch seams and I went ahead and pressed it open as I recommended before and so there's our first block out of our 12 blocks so <clears throat> you could chain piece this now I did chain piece these two, these two, and these two. That was all one chain. And then I pulled it all off, and then I put the two, or the three sections together with two more seams. And then I took it off, and I wanted to show you this, so I went ahead and um, pressed it and everything. You could sit and do all of your pairs first, but I don't trust myself. So I'm just going to do one block at a time. I'll chain piece two pieces uh, at a time for each block, but then I think I'm going to pull it off and then I'll pull down another set down to here and go to the sewing machine and continue like that. So I will be back here with you again when I have all of these sewn up and pressed. All right, I've got all of my blocks put together. I have 12 of them. I'm going to use six for the front and six for my backing. That's what I came up with. So this configuration, one in the center on the top, and I know you can't see this, my board doesn't go to the floor. And then the one that you see on the table there will go on the bottom. And then I have two um, here on each side. I may move those around, I'm not sure. Uh, I have these six remaining ones that I'm gonna put together like this and there will be three of those and that'll go down the middle of the backing so yes I made too many blocks uh, or I made my blocks a little bigger than they needed to be but honestly I like how big they are so I would say if you want to make yours smaller and use more of them around your border go down to six inches maybe eight you know cut your blocks 
your half square triangle squares cut those down to eight and a half seven and a half or six and a half I probably wouldn't go any lower than six uh, six and a half to start and then you'll cut them you know they'll be sewn up as six inch half square triangles and then you can make your cuts and and make them smaller but what I'm gonna do for the corners is I have been noticing as I'm sewing that this panel has some really cool green shades in it with the water and with the trees as well and I think that's what I'm gonna use to fill in my corners so I'll have a corner piece on uh, each corner um, I'm gonna wrap it around so each long strip and each uh, wide strip will have a piece of that on it let me show you a little bit closer what this looks like I have another yard of it down here so that could be part of my backing if you've ever been to Smoky Mountains uh, there's a wide variety of woodland type flowers and they're all in this print so uh, this is it too same thing it just looks different in different different lights but this actually will go very well with these colors so I'm gonna do that uh, might seem a little odd to you guys but I love the idea so I'm just gonna go with it so just remember it's your quilt you can do it however you want to do it um, this is what I'm gonna do so my next step is on my two uh, long sides I'm gonna have to sew those two together on each side those two blocks and then uh, calculate how much I need to get to the top of the panel and I also have to trim my panel still so see the white well you can't see it now let me go back a little bit there it is maybe see that white strip I'm gonna cut all that off if you wanted to keep it wide you could um, you know leave a quarter inch of the white and make sure you get it sewn in but um, yeah and I don't think I'm gonna add any other border on the in inside of this I don't think I thought about doing a narrow border of the green all the way around the cream border that's already there but I don't think I am just hang on you'll just have to see okay here's the finished top I like how it turned out I was doubtful about the green as I was putting it on I did add a four inch actually it turns out to be a three and a half inch strip uh, on either side of the top and bottom blocks uh, just to add a little more um, I think the word I'm looking for is symmetry uh, with the corners so that the corners all are the same size even though I'm using two blocks on each long side and only one on the top and bottom so I think I think that accomplished what I wanted to accomplish there but it does pull out some of the greens from the center I'm outside here as you could tell uh, to kind of give you an idea of what the actual color scheme turned out to be so it was a risk it was a huge risk I like it I actually like it quite a lot you may not agree <laughs> you may have thought I should have stuck with the um, more fall colors but um, we don't really know what time of the year it is in this panel it could be any time of year it could be spring it could be fall so there it is I will leave all of the measurements for my configuration here in the description box in case you want to repeat this with your National Park panel any questions or comments about it please leave those uh, and I'll, I'll get back with you and then we will be back here on next Wednesday for the final and fourth panel idea so tune back in and of course as always we'll see you back here on finish it Friday 
and Monday quilt chat as well. So subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you soon. Bye.